In this video, I'm going to talk about some basic accounting terminology and concepts. First, let's define accounting. Accounting is recording financial transactions, classifying those transactions. In other words, you're just putting them into categories, making sure they're in the right place, things like that. Processing that information into reports, and these reports are going to be summarized. In other words, a profit and loss shows the totals for the period, not necessarily every single individual item. And there are two fields of accounting. There's financial accounting, which is more focused on information for people outside of the company, external decision, decision makers. External decision makers would be tax authorities, creditors, potential investors, people like that. And these, and this accounting is going to follow generally accepted accounting principles, which are basically guidelines for doing accounting. And these are issued by the FASB, which I'm going to get into in just a few minutes. Financial accounting is based on historical information, things that have, things that have already happened, sales that have already happened, expenses that have already happened. You're putting them into the system, categorizing them inputting them and then producing reports based on these things that have already happened. And then managerial accounting is going to be focused on information for internal decision makers. So this is where you get into your really analytical calculations, things like how much does it cost to produce each product? How much does it cost to produce each service? How much does it cost to service each customer per month? It's going to get into those detailed calculations to help the owners make better decisions so that they can have an efficient, profitable business. Managerial accounting is going to get into current information and potentially future information to do things like forecasting, budgeting, things like that. And I want to just briefly mention governing organizations. Just in case you come across them, Financial Accounting Standards Board, they oversee accounting standards. Securities and Exchange Commission, they're overseeing financial markets, publicly traded companies in the United States, and generally accepted accounting principles are basically guidelines for accounting information and reporting. By everybody following similar guidelines or the same guidelines, it helps with consistency. So when creditors are making decisions on who to loan money to, if everybody's following the same guidelines, then it helps them make those decisions a little easier. And all of this is going on in the United States. If you're in another country, you may have other reporting standards that you have to adhere to. And then I also want to mention the cost principle just because I see this come up in actual practice. It's also called the historical cost principle. And this just says that assets should be recorded at their cost. In other words, the amount you actually pay. So you're not putting your buildings and other assets on your books at what their value is because the value can change constantly. Um, so you're just going to put those on the books at cost. Now in a later lesson, we're going to get into some special rules related to inventory, but for now, just know that the basic rule is that assets should be recorded at an actual cost or what you expect to pay. And then I'm also going to probably bring these up a lot over the lessons but I just want to introduce you to this. You really should know what the account categories are and what they mean. So an asset is an economic resource of a business. It's something you own, like a building, checking accounts, cash, vehicles, things like that. Liabilities are debts. Equity would be the owner's claim to the assets of the business. In other words, the owner's investment. Revenues would be money earned from selling products and services. So it's the sale price. 
And then expenses are just your general day-to-day -day costs of operating your business. And I have a sheet that might be helpful. I will make sure this is on my website. I have the account categories, my defini a definition, some extra notes are in here, and just some examples. I might already have this on my website, but I'm gonna double check. But it's called account categories examples. So I really would suggest getting familiar with these categories and we'll get more into details about whether something should be recorded as a revenue, an asset. I think the two most confusing ones are assets versus expenses. So just try to think of assets as things you own. They're gonna benefit you in the future when you use them or collect money from them, such as inventory or receivables. And then expenses are gonna be costs that you have to pay in order to operate your business. Like you have to pay your employee salaries, you have to pay rent, you have to pay utilities. These expenses are more like things being used up. And then I just wanna define account just because I'm gonna use this word so much in these lessons. An account is a detailed record that tracks the increases and decreases to something such as an asset, liability, equity, revenue, or expense. Um, so all this means is that you're gonna have an advertising expense account. Anytime you do anything to advertising expense, you're gonna either add or subtract to that account. You're gonna have a building account. Anytime you add to your buildings or sell or get rid of any buildings, you're gonna add and subtract to the building account. Anytime you have revenue, anytime you sell something, that's gonna add to your revenue account. You're gonna increase your revenue account. If you give a customer money back, that is going to subtract from your revenue because you're giving, you're taking away from revenue. So we're adding and subtracting two different accounts. And this is gonna be a theme throughout these lessons. And then I also wanna point out, which I'm sure I'll mention this again, that in accounting, we have something called a double entry system. Every transaction affects at least two accounts. So there's gonna be at least one debit and one credit in every entry. And we'll get into what debits and credits are and I'll do a lot of examples with that. But for now, just know that every transaction is gonna affect two things, at least two things. It could affect more than two. And in accounting, things have to balance. So your total debits are gonna to have to equal your total credits. And we'll get into details and do examples and all of that at later points, just to give you a really simple example. If you pay the electric bill, that is going to be related to your utilities expense account and your checking account. So it's affecting two things. And then another thing that you're gonna see quite a bit in these lessons is the accounting equation. The simplified accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus equity. So you can think of this if you own a house. What your house is valued at it would be on the asset side. So say you have a house that's worth $300,000, that would be your asset. If you owe $200,000 on it, that would be your liability and then your equity would be the difference. Now that's not how it's gonna work in accounting because I said earlier that assets are recorded at cost, not what they're valued, but it was just to kind of give you an idea of what this might look like. Obviously in a business, it's gonna be business assets, business debts, and then owner's equity. And then I'm gonna break down equity even further. Um, you would basically take any beginning equity that the owners had at the beginning of the period, add any revenues or income, subtract any expenses, and the difference is going to be your net income. And then you would add any additional investments that the owner made during that time period and subtract any draws, any withdrawals. And that's gonna equal your ending equity. And the ending equity at the end of the period should fit into this equation. We'll get into this more when we do the financial statements and you see how this is laid out and you see how everything works together. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave you a good introduction of accounting and I will see you in the next lesson.